And here we are again. Another day has passed and even more leaks keep springing up. Will Apple have anything left to announce come the event in just six days? So we're gonna be taking a look at the new naming scheme for the iPhone at 10s Plus. I actually have a new version of the 10s Plus, uh, the clone 6.5 inch version I wanted to share with you as well. And a ton of information regarding the new products they're gonna be announcing in just six days. All right, so strap in, here we go. We're gonna start with the naming. So the iPhone XS was revealed not too long ago. The actual promo images, we know that's along with the Apple Watch Series 4 and the naming, but the iPhone 6.5 inch was a mystery. So now 9to5Mac believes they have the actual name of this upcoming iPhone and it will be called the iPhone XS Max. Like really, Max? Um, I thought about that for a second. Does it make sense? I mean, the iPhone XS Plus is instantly recognizable. The Plus series, they've been around for already three generations. Why would they change it? But when I really thought about it, the Plus actually signifies something. The Plus means you get more for your money, more features. Yes, it does mean an increase in screen size as well, but the difference between the 7 and the 7 Plus, 8, 8 Plus, 6S and 6S Plus was always bigger than just the screen size. There were differences in the camera, you know, dual lens to single lens. The battery life, of course, does get better. The speakers are a little bit beefier. I believe the screen resolution changes too. It's a little bit more dense all around. You're getting a lot more for your money. And now the max basically means it's just maxed out the larger version of the iPhone 10 S since there won't be that big of a difference between these devices. I actually think that this naming sort of makes sense and you know, it'll grow on us. The iPhone 10 S max. I mean, it's pretty smooth rolls off the tongue. iPhone 10 S plus iPhone 10 S max. Uh, I guess I guess it could work. It's the larger version of the 10s. The only main differences, as we talked about, will most likely be the screen size and the battery life. Aside from that, feature-wise, there could be some software differences, but everything speed and camera-wise is mostly the same here. So we've got the iPhone 10s, the iPhone 10s Max, and the 6.1 inch should be called the iPhone 9. That's what I thought would make sense. The iPhone 9 is an upgrade from the iPhone 8, which it will be replacing. So why not call it? And it is a step down from the iPhone 10 and the 10s. So I personally still think that the iPhone 9 makes sense, but now there's new rumors and word going around that it will be called the iPhone XR. Now take note, this is coming from less reputable sources. This is a bunch of other smaller websites that are just basically repeating the same thing. I couldn't actually track down where this came from. So the iPhone 10R? 10L, 10 Lite, I, that really doesn't make sense. And I don't think that they should do that even if that was to be the true name, but the iPhone 10R could be the iPhone 9 or the 6.1 inches uh, real name. And eager to stay ahead of the curve, a website selling cases based in France has already renamed their iPhones accordingly, the iPhone 10S and the iPhone 10S Max. And then they have the iPhone IX, which is the iPhone 11. So the 6.1 inch is suddenly the iPhone 11. Hmm. Yeah, this is totally not substantiated. There's no evidence that this is true, but uh, they just wanted some publicity. So that's why they changed that. And we've got some great news regarding the pricing of this year's iPhone. So a German based site, let me try and pronounce that Masserk Poff. They say that they actually learned the true pricing of this year's iPhone lineup. And it's actually a very, very relieving one. So they say that the prices will be staying the same in Euro. So not in USD in Euro, they will be staying the same and roughly translated. That could mean that the prices will stay the same, uh, similar to the iPhone 8 lineup and the iPhone 10 of 2017. So let me elaborate here. They're saying that the iPhone 10s will start at a starting price of $799. That's a $200 price drop from the iPhone 10 series while you're getting an additional speed factor, camera improvements, whatnot, all those differences, but at a cheaper price. That is amazing. If that one is true, that's gonna be a very popular product. Now, $100 cheaper is the iPhone 9, the 10R, if you will. I'm not even gonna call it that, that is so not true. But it's gonna start at 699, they say, and the iPhone 10s Max, if that's to be believed, will be starting at $999. So that one's still gonna be, you know, the top end model, the most expensive one. So 999 seems fair for a larger device, I guess. Although it would have been cool if they shied that down to $899, that would be a much more acceptable price. Uh, but then again, $1,000 smartphones are not going away. Now that's basically translated from Euro to USD, the actual pricing that they provided was 799 euros, 999 for the 10s, and 1149 for the 10s Max, which is exactly basically the same pricing of the 2017 iPhone lineup. And tracking back a little, when the Apple Pencil news broke that it would be supported on this year's iPhones, uh, there was another piece of info that was released alongside that, and that's that a 512 gigabyte iPhone would be available. They are 
saying that 512 gigabytes will still be happening this year and it'll hold a $150 premium over the 256 gigabyte model, which also will be holding a $150 premium over the 64 gigabyte model, which will be the entry level storage. Now today, Apple updated the Apple events app for the Apple TV and there's some new artwork in here. And this goes alongside the uh, previous one that they released with the invites, which is a gold circle. This is a gold sliver of an Apple logo. It looks really nice. The only tie in between those is basically the gold color. So I believe it's going to be a gold centered events, new gold Apple Watch, new gold iPhones and gold whatever else. You're gonna have to pay in gold for the new iPhones. And Makatakara broke the news today that Apple will be allowing third party manufacturers to make MFI certified USB-C to lightning cables. So this is previously reserved only for Apple at the moment, but soon once they allow it, you'll be able to get a cheaper version. And by the way, this is the block that Apple will be releasing, a USB-C fast charger. So pretty much what it'll look like, a little bit beefier, not much, you know, it just extends a little. The fast charger they will be including in the box. And by the way, they will be including a cable like this as well, USB-C to lightning, and uh, it's gonna be very nice for the people that have the MacBooks. You'll be able to get that included and compatible right away with your MacBooks. And I'm excited for the fast charging right out of the box. It's ridiculous that you have to pay more and get a separate adapter just to use fast charging. So yeah, that's gonna be a good one. And the resolution for the Apple Watch Series 4 has leaked. So 9 to 5 Mac looking at some internal files of watchOS Beta 5 was able to determine the actual resolution of the new Apple Watch Series 4. And boy, it is going to be such a pleasure to use. They were able to determine that it's a 384 by 480 resolution. The existing one was 312 by 390. So side by side, look at how much extra screen space you get here. You're gonna be able to see much more content and they actually plug this into the Apple Watch simulator and uh, Apple doesn't allow you to change the button sizes. So those did stay the same size, but look around, you do get more room in general, more padding, text seems larger, everything is more comfortable to use. And with Apple's addition of the Watch OS 5 internet browser, you'll actually be able to get more functionality from the watch and I'm excited about that. They did say that the pixels per inch will likely be higher as well. They estimate somewhere around 345 pixels per inch. So a larger resolution, more dense in general in the same form factor roughly as the existing one, sign me up. And yes, third party developers will need to rebuild their apps most likely. It won't scale automatically correctly. So like going from an iPhone 7 series to the iPhone 10, a lot of the apps had to be updated. They didn't look right until they were. And 9 to 5 Mac also added that there will be new watch faces to take advantage of this edge to edge display. So not only the one that we saw, but more additionally alongside that, and also there will likely be more complications. So both third party and Apple built ones. And I thought I'd throw this in here. It piqued my interest. USA Today actually conducted a survey between roughly about 1600 people that were looking forward to a new iPhone and they asked them, what do you want most out of a new iPhone? And surprisingly the results, number one, 75% of them said they want a larger battery, more battery life, and the least amount of people actually wanted a smaller notch. It went battery life, a shatterproof display, and expandable storage after that. And some notable ones after that were to switch to USB-C to make Face ID faster and for a faster refresh rate for apps. And I noticed that yesterday on the iPad video, not a lot of people actually like the rough square design. I personally think it's a great idea, again, with the comfort factor. Um, really think about it. It'd be very hard to hold the device with almost no bezel with a curved edge like it currently exists. So we'll have to wait and see what Apple does here in just six days, but I personally think it's a good solution. And lastly, there's a new version of the iPhone XS Plus clone. Sandy Dixon actually tweeted this, that it would give us a rough idea of uh, the sizing, and I gotta agree. It's actually giving me a great idea of what it'll be like. It's just like the Plus series, just more screen. So I think anyone that had a Plus phone will easily transition into this thing. Anyways, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, guys, so here is the other version of this very clone. Should be a newer, updated one. Let's see if there's any differences. I noticed that this one on the back immediately says iPhone 10 plus here, but they did get that wrong. Stay with the news, my boys. 256 gigabytes. So they put it in an effort, whereas this one just said iPhone 10. Let's dig in, see what's changed in the software. It's pretty much, I believe, the only difference. I doubt they ever update the hardware or the cameras. Seems like it's just a repeat every single time. Okay, and the font here is not as original looking. Looks weird. All right, not in bubble wrap at least. And this is the space gray, also comes with, whoa, did I just dig my finger underneath the screen? Wow, that's, that's a good sign right there. All right, so let's power it up. So size-wise, this thing immediately shows itself to be massive. 
And the text on the back of this one looks way more original. I like the space gray version. So compared to my iPhone 10 here, look at that difference. That is simply huge. This is gonna be the top end device and it certainly shows. So yeah, I don't think that this thing's any different. Let's actually check the version number in here, 11.2, no. So the packaging changed, they updated that, but this thing feels exactly the same as the old one. I did manage to test, but hey, still a good size comparison here. The 6.1 inch, a little bit bigger than that one. Massively larger than the iPhone 10 edition. Very excited guys, less than a week to go. Stay tuned, I'm sorry. I literally cannot keep up with these rumors. There's just so many coming out and it's spoiling all the fun, but hey, I can't resist.